it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and I am in San Carlos today at one of our very first installations. This install predates tip of the day. I know, it's, I'm shook. Uh, so I don't have any videos to link so you can see befores, um, but this is the graphs and these are the dearest, sweetest people and their son and Greg used to work together in the rental industry and that's how how we came upon this. These dear people took a real chance on us when we were just starting out in landscape design and gave us this giant backyard with which to play. This also microclimatically is really hot, uh, particularly this wall here. Oh my gosh, it's, it's just such, this first time, um, yeah, I'm seeing this in, in a while, but such an evolution in my aesthetic. I was still using the Senecio uh, orange pups a lot. This is a plant that I've kind of gotten away from because it tends to get away from me. Uh, Hesper aloe was a big one for me. Um, looks like I've got some little, or they might have popped in some little attenuatas in here, but they were having difficulty keeping things going. The irrigation, bless you, Hannah, the irrigation is um, also predates our installation. They had irrigation, it was already operational, so we didn't make any modifications. But today, Greg is. He's going to modify this whole area because they're having a lot of difficulty keeping things going in here. But take a look at how I used river rock as a ribbon, and then I threw burgundy lava in front of it, which theoretically okay, but now I know in an area this large. Um, that's framed, you know, inside with decomposed granite, that's probably not because the maintenance. And yes, they're over the, the burgundy. Uh, it's just too hard to keep in place. It picks up, you know, you can see all the detritus. Um, so what they would prefer is just a, just a row of the river rock and no, um, no red lava. So if we have time, we will be raking that all up and putting it in the back. I brought in some pretty rocks seven years ago. This is really, really cool looking. I think this is Baja. Yeah. It's a real kind of hodgepodge. If you look over on this side, it's, it's modeled almost like a Napa Canyon, but the right of what? Oh yeah, those are definitely Baja there. Um, some of you that have followed me forever may remember me posting on Facebook years ago, uh, this fishing boat. This fishing boat was in the backyard. It, they had gone out with their grandkids and their kids for years, but it had lost its purpose. It leaked. And I'm really proud of this because it was a suggestion to stage this in the landscape. And I made an adorable planter out of it, which we are going to completely overhaul uh, today and tomorrow. But if you know, you look, you can see Edry so clever. Many of the tchotchkes and art that you see all over the fence lines is all her. I didn't do much of the staging of the art. Edry has a tremendous eye and has done such a beautiful job of just adding whimsy to this already really interesting specimen garden. I mean, this is, this is a huge space. They wanted to keep accessibility through the gate so that they could bring trucks and trailers back here. Uh, this area here postdates my initial installation. They put what looks to be uh, Cali Gold 3.8s all in through here, added more flagstone. Uh, this is where the boat used to live back here. And they did this edging with river rock and planted these things themselves. Look at that Eve's needle crest. It's starting to revert to, so that should be hacked off um, and just keep the crested parts going. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at this, look at the table that they made to go around this tree. It's so cute, just the cutest. This, this is also not our work. The putting green, they, they uh, had a company, I don't remember who, um, put this in for them. We don't do putting greens or artificial turf, but they did a really nice job of it. 
And then here we go. Um, this uh, filifera, this agave, I planted that. It's majestic. The aloe cameronii, and then her window, her old antique window and shelf and the little planter, even right down to the tiny little bird right here. It's a little salt and pepper shaker. It's a salt shaker, so precious. And you know, all of these old milk, um, rusty milk cans that I absolutely love. This, I think this pygmy palm um, was here. I don't think I planted that. And yeah, I mean the chiminea with the portulacaria coming out of it. Um, Alstroemeria kind of coming up here and there. Uh, this little Bainsy eye I planted and it's not growing very rapidly because it's it's not overwatered. So you can control the growth of your aloe trees. If you want to slow them down, reduce the water. If you want to speed them up, add more. Then this is the first desert museum tree I ever planted and it looks terrific. Surprisingly, the Synodendium grantii also looks great. I haven't had a lot of luck with this plant in heat. It does great in La Jolla and in coastal areas, but they usually always look desiccated and crappy in, in hotter locations. So I have no explanation for why the Synodendium looks so good. And this was probably our very first dry stream ever. Oh, such humble beginnings. Um, I remember we were so stinking proud of this when we did it. Uh, we got this cute little bridge going over, but check it out. Isn't that so cute? You know, we have, uh, we have since, since upped our game quite a bit in the dry stream um, category, but you know, I can see, I can see some elements that have sustained over the, over the last seven years since we did this. You know, see the mouth down there? We would have elevated that more now instead of having it so flat. Um, say what? The barrel's inside the stream. Still yep, yep. And uh, Hannah said the barrel inside the stream bed. I still do that. You know, try to move plants into the installation. I like the, the flow of the stream, but we use more variety of river rock now. And I, you know, I can see... How I edged it with some three-quarter lava. I looks like I might have done some creva here and some little La Paz pebbles. So yeah, I can, you know, draw some driftwood. Um, I like the juxtaposition of the tree. I think that looks really, really great. And uh, yeah, so yeah, super cute. Um, okay, how's this for a combo? I did the upright portalacaria and Petalanthus bracteatus. Isn't that a hoot? Isn't that so funny? Um, then my underplantings of agave moonshine, aloe vera, Crassula argentea sunset. I don't understand that at all. I don't know what the heck I was thinking, um, but I, if time permits, I'm going to dig up a lot of these plants and work them in elsewhere and just let the, the uh, Bracteatus and the Portulacaria own the fence. This tree was here. We are going to create a tapestry in this area right here. We're going to pull out this little uh, uh, juniper, I believe. Um, move out the driftwood, build up the soil, tuck in, you know, some uh, size appropriate mini boulder. I may or may not work with this barrel here. I may move this somewhere because I think it might be just a little too big. It looks like there's a little barrel at the, at the mouth of the dry stream. We might be able to move into the place here instead because it's much smaller. That feels like a good idea. That might happen. And then we are also going to be doing a little tapestry under this uh, desert willow. Is that what, what this is, guys? Um, not messy. I don't hate this. You know, it's pretty clean. 
Uh, so a little, we'll be raising this up, doing some tapestry work here. So here are, you know, some of the plants that I pulled from Waterwise. Um, Terry and Kevin and Hannah and Greg are here helping me on this install and we're in the process of unloading all of the plants. So yeah, it was, it's really fun to come back and look at an installation and I have to give so much credit to our homeowners for doing such an incredible job of maintaining this really large property. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for the grand reveal of the reworked uh, fishing boat and our two new tapestries. Bye guys.